Hello folks, the focus of our today's video will be showcasing Citrix ARM service auto-scaling solution on Azure that allows you to deploy Citrix ADC in an active-active deployment and lets you seamlessly scale both the ingress point or front end to an ADC cluster and back end application servers using the Azure Virtual Machine Scale set. Let us proceed with seeing how to do it. To ensure an end-to-end -end configuration of our auto-scaling solution, there are primarily four major stages. Firstly, fulfill the prerequisites at ADM as well as Azure side. Secondly, create an auto-scale group. Third, configure an application. And last, test the scale-in scale-out capability. Before moving to the actual deployment, let's look at the pre-entry steps to be done at both Azure as well as Citrix end. For more details on prerequisites section, refer our Citrix talks by either clicking on the link mentioned or scan the QR code. At Azure end, firstly you need to set up the Azure infrastructure with a VNet in the desired resource group, subnets and security groups, one for each management, client and server with appropriate ports opened. Make sure that the security group allows the Citrix ADM agent to be able to access the Citrix ADC. Citrix ADM uses the application as a service principle to auto scale Citrix ADC instances in Microsoft Azure, so make sure your application has owner privileges. The Citrix ADM service agent works as an intermediary between the Citrix ADM and the discovered instances in the data center or on the cloud. So you can provision Citrix ADM agent via ADM service or from Azure Marketplace as per your convenience but make sure to deploy it in management subnet. Thereafter, create a site to be bound to your ADM service agent. Next, let's proceed to the second section that takes care of the creation of autoscale group on ADM, where you can configure various parameters to deploy VPX cluster on Azure. Here, first verify if your agent is up and running and then start adding an autoscale group by an intuitive and self-guided workflow. To begin with, choose the provisioning infrastructure platform. Here, we are focused on Azure. Now, fill in the appropriate parameters such as site, cloud access profile, ADC profile, etc. either from the drop-down or configure them on the go. Choose Azure Traffic Manager or ALB at the distribution tier to your clusters depending upon whether or not you want to provide public access to your ADC nodes in the autoscale group. Next, make sure you enable the autoscale group which will make it possible to pre-build an autoscale group and also to come back later and enable or disable it as needed. Now, depending upon your requirement, choose Availability Set or Availability Zone. For multi-region deployment, opt for deployment in Availability Zone where you can get up to 96 node support. Else, if you are dealing with one cloud region and does not require support of more than 32 nodes, go for Availability Set. I have opted for availability set for my demo. Next step is to set thresholds for the following parameters whose values must be monitored to trigger a scale out or a scale in. Here the summary section gives you more details on the way your auto scaling will occur. ADM can provision an extra cluster node as a hot spare to help expedite scale out events. Set the limits of various parameters such as number of instances, cooldown period, watch time, etc. Next, you can choose the licensing mode for your Citrix ADCs provisioned by choosing per vCPU based pool licensing or bandwidth based that you have installed and managed in your ADM service. Here, I am choosing subscription based advanced 10 Mbps license from the Azure marketplace. In the provisioning parameters tab, choose your Azure resource group, an appropriate VM size, cloud access profile, latest images and IPs and server subnet per instance. And also, I have three NICs and will configure them appropriately using the drop-down options such that allocating the security groups and subnets from the drop-down that I configured in step 1. After the autoscale group is created, let's configure an application for the autoscale group 
Click on configure and you can choose from various options available as to how you want to access your application. For this demo, I wanted an intranet application. For front-end autoscale support, use style books that support autoscale to configure the applications. For this demo, we'll use the HTTP SSL load balancing style book where you just need to fill in the values to each of the parameters. Here, you have two options of choosing the backend server group, that is, either static or cloud. In case of virtual machine scale set to be part of the backend server group, configure parameters under cloud category. Note that support for VMSS requires the ability for the management NSIP to reach the Azure Cloud API service. I've already configured my VMSS with certain thresholds. And now we'll just add the reference of VMSS setting name to my cloud-based service group and the other configuration details. If at all, you have standalone application servers in your VNet, choose the static condition. Now, click on create and wait until the application is deployed successfully using the stylebook's config packs. Make note of the domain as this will be used in our next section. So, we are now in the last section where we will showcase a quick test case that will exhibit ADM service autoscaling capability. Let's go to the autoscale dashboard where you can see the thresholds defined in the autoscale group and we can observe only one node is configured for now and this activity section gives you the complete information on the series of events happened and their severity too. Let's begin with the actual testing where we will trigger a large number of parallel requests to access our application. And here we can observe that as soon as 70% of our throughput is breached, the scale out is triggered with provisioning of a new node that will be auto joined to the cluster to load balance the traffic. In the Azure dashboard, we can see the status of the new autoscale node that typically takes 4 to 5 minutes to spin up is up and running once the scale out process is completed. We can observe the same in events dashboard section too. Now, the cooldown period will be started and in the duration, no scale out or scaling occurs. After we stop the huge influx of requests, it will switch back to one node. Thereby, this process of scaling is triggered, deprovisioning the newly created node. Thereby, after successful scaling process, we can observe that the traffic has thus been stabilized. With this end-to-end -end demo, you have now seen how using Citrix ADM service it's simple and easy to deploy and configure application on Azure which can autoscale. End-to-end -end autoscaling enables your businesses manage large number of workloads by shelving the laborious task of manually allocating the resources, ensuring your application meets the performance requirements and above all helps to keep costs low by deploying only the resources needed at any given time. Thanks for watching this video.